All right, and we saw units wise here, the units are kind of confusing. If you're using the ideal gas law, you've got to use standard SI units, at least in this course. Uh, in the chemistry class, you kind of learn a way to use, the, use this with non-standard units. But in physics class, you don't really see how to use this with non-standard units. So in the physics class, you have to use standard units here. But if you're using this approach, most of the non-standard units are going to cancel anyway. The only units that, um, so you can use any units as long as they're consistent, except for temperature. Any formula with T has to be in kelvins. It's only when there's a delta T that it doesn't matter whether it's kelvins or Celsius. So that's, unit conversion is a big issue now. Uh, a complication here that I saw on the exam was, suppose that they hadn't told you that the pressure was three times 10 to the fifth pascals. Suppose they had told you the gauge pressure. Suppose they told you the gauge pressure. Well, first of all, this is not gauge pressure. This is actual pressure. So you've got to plug in the actual pressure into these formulas. You can't plug in the gauge pressure. That'll mess you up. Either, either one situation or two situations, you've got to use the actual pressure. So there was a homework problem like this where they gave you the gauge pressure and not the actual pressure. Well, we saw how, what to do there earlier. We saw that if you're given the gauge pressure, we, ha we know how to find the absolute pressure. I think we did an example like that. Um, so you just have to look up your formula that relates the gauge pressure and the actual pressure. And if they tell you what the gauge pressure is, you would plug that in and figure out the actual pressure. And it's the actual pressure that you would actually plug into this formula here. Okay, so the point I wanted to make again is these formulas have to use the actual pressure. If they give you the gauge pressure, you have to translate that into absolute. Or they might ask you for the gauge pressure. Well, still, the formula is going to tell you the absolute pressure. And then you would use the work we did earlier to figure out how to change that into a gauge pressure. Let's actually look up the, the value for R in your inside front cover. I just wanted to point out here, these are SI units. Joules is an SI unit, K is an SI unit, moles. That is the reason why if you use the ideal gas law, everything else has to be in SI units. Otherwise, they won't be consistent with your R. And the reason why we, don't we didn't need SI units for pressure and volume over here is because we weren't using R. Notice that when we did our two situation problem, we didn't actually have to use R, because that wasn't one of the things that was changing. So that's why we didn't have to use SI units here except for the temperature. We could just use consistent units. But if you're doing a one situation problem, you're going to use R, and you have to be consistent with your R. So that has to be in SI units. So if I'm doing a two situation uh, problem that involves like water and liquid and or uh, gas, in a gas state, then I would have to look up the R for the, is there an R for the liquid state? Ah, well, of course, we would only really use this for gases. We'd only use this equation oh, for gases. This is only a gas law. So we wouldn't deal with liquids at all with this. We'll deal with liquids maybe later today, but this is only for gases. So then how would the, how would the R be changing? Oh, it doesn't change. Oh. There is only one R, right? So that this would is, only be for one situation problem then, not for two situation problems? I, I don't quite follow you there. Well, because like um, for two situation problems then, the, the, problem, the variables that are, remain constant that's right. So then, and R is always a constant. Right. So, so it, 
never get, so it never really is involved in a two situation problem. Okay, After all, the okay. problem that we just did. There was no R. Right. So then, okay. um, That's why, since we're not using R, we don't need to be using units that are consistent with R. Mm -hmm. That's why it was okay here to use, whoops, mm -hmm. use centimeters okay. and, uh, well, to use centimeters here. Mm -hmm. okay. And it would also be okay to use atmospheres, as okay. long as we were using atmospheres for the other pressure as well. But if you're doing a one situation problem, you would do that just by plugging into this formula. Right, for a one situation problem, you just plug into this formula, and then you would be using R. So then you have to use units that are consistent with R. In chemistry class, you, you learn a different value of R that you can use with non-standard units. In chemistry class, in chemistry class, they tell you this value of R that's in liters and atmospheres. And then it's okay to use liters and atmospheres. But this is really not usually used in physics. That wasn't in your covers. That's not how they want you to solve problems here in this class. So we won't use that. Since we're using this R, we have to use standard units as long as we're working with R. more of that um, because that's an important topic but there's lots of other stuff to get to but hopefully you'll be able to find some other practice problems to do uh, on that we covered some of the key ideas and some of the ideal gas problems in your in your homework anyway